Well, good morning. It is the first Monday of July and I thought I'd just check in because I haven't done a to camera piece for a while. You can hear my voice on some of my shorts, but I thought I would do something actually to camera um, and just check in and see how everyone is really. It's been a weird year so far and I've been I'm feeling quite insecure at the moment with the way everything is in the world financially. Inflation's gone up again, which means interest rates have gone up, which is good for my savings. But of course it means that my rent is probably going to go up. Um, my rent isn't due in, renewal isn't due until October, but I tend to get my renewal notices at the beginning of August. So in one month I will know how much my rent is going to go up again, probably. I cannot imagine that my rent isn't going to go up. And I don't feel very secure in what I'm doing work-wise at the moment. Uh, business is really slow in my very small handmade business, as I imagine it probably is for a lot of small handmade makers. Um, I, I can't even class myself as a small business. I'm a micro business. I'm one person working at home on my own. And at the beginning of this year, I thought, right, I now need to really get my act together. Things that I probably should have done last year, but I thought I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to do things. Um, but this year I have put new things in place, like this YouTube channel, which is new for me. And YouTube generally is new for me, but I'm getting to grips with it. I started my own website because I wanted to start distancing myself from only selling on e-commerce platforms because it's not a secure way to sell. You are working effectively for somebody else and as the e-commerce platforms become more and more obsessed with pay to play, they want you to pay for adverts, they're more interested in their own profit margins than they are about um, the quality and range of their sellers. So you see fees going up and when they do their annual reviews, it's about how much money shareholders made, not the quality and the content of the channel. And, you know, someone could turn around tomorrow and, and pull the likes of Etsy or Amazon. It won't happen, but it could. And that would mean that my, my business channel will have gone. So making that not my main source of business exposure was really important. So I've taken the advice of other channels that I've been watching on YouTube and in other places and I set up my YouTube channel which is to showcase what I do primarily and I set up my website. Now my website's only been running since I think I launched it in April. So it's only been going a few months. It's not, uh, I, I, I paid for it, started paying for it back in I think February or maybe even January, I can't even remember now. Um, but I didn't launch it until the end of March and or in April because it's taken time to build. I had to migrate something like five to six hundred items across and they all needed tweaking they weren't all just perfect when I migrated them from Etsy and it takes time for that sort of thing to get traction they reckon it can take eight months to a year for Google to find your business enough and know where to put you in rankings and it's the same with other sites really um, 
if you're on Pinterest, it can take eight months to get traction on Pinterest. Uh, blogs, I've been running a blog since the day I started my business back in 2012. And it's been very on and off, and I'm still, even now, I'm still not entirely sure what the focus of it is. It doesn't showcase my products, it's more about industry, it's more about the behind the scenes workings, which is why the YouTube channel's been so good. But I've not allowed the business to become my only form of income. I have side hustles, I have passive income, which I have increased since the pandemic because my business model changed in 2018 when I started working from home. I lost my studio, um, I lost my other part-time job which was enough money for me to live on so the business was very much a almost a hobby in the background because I didn't need the money from it and then all of a sudden within a space of a few months the the rug was pulled out from under me and everything was gone so I had to start effectively running my business from scratch um, the way I was earning my money for my business had also completely changed and I suddenly became entirely reliant on selling on Etsy which had never happened before I've always had an Etsy site I've never I never utilized it I would sell the odd thing but it wasn't my main source of income I didn't need it and suddenly in October 2018 I went from not needing it to this is all I've got and I lost my studio so I started working from home and my whole dynamic changed I had to start again from scratch so the rest of 2018 was reorientating myself. 2019 was starting to build that business from scratch. Um, and things increased, things got better. 2019 was going well. And then 2020 happened. And everything changed. Um, I had to pivot what I was selling. I was watching what was going on in the news. Everyone was in lockdown. Suddenly everyone became obsessed about crafting and making from home and filling their time at home because they weren't at work. And I took advantage of that because I had um, quite a lot of haberdashery items to sell. I had lots of fabric, I had lots of zips and buttons and all sorts of things. And I pivoted and just became an online um, haberdashery seller and did really well. 2020 was a great year for me in that respect. I didn't make a fortune, but it was my best traffic, it was my highest number of sales, and it kept me focused and occupied in a very difficult year. And because I was all now working from home, I had access to everything, the post office was still open, I had lots of um, uh, packaging materials, I didn't need to go out and buy anything, so I was really self-sufficient, and that was brilliant. And then of course, 2020 stopped happening and people started to come out of lockdowns and things started to go back to normal and that income went from great to what the hell happened because nobody wanted that anymore it wasn't a change of lifestyle it was a gap filler and I knew I would be taking advantage of it while it was there so since 2021 it's been a slow downward trajectory as people have gone back to normal, incomes have changed, and now, of course, we have a cost of living crisis. We have a potential recession. We have high interest rates, which means high mortgage rates, high inflation, the price of everything's gone up, and the sort of things that I make are not priorities. I know there are people still buying, there are still people with money to invest, and all that sort of thing, but as a general rule, business is down and it went down last year in fact it, went, it started to started to dip in 2021 and then it dipped in 2022 and now here we are in 2023 and I'm wondering where else I can make my money I'm coasting at the moment because like everyone my bills have gone up but I don't have the income it's incredibly um, difficult to predict. And so this weekend, I feel quite down about it all. I feel, what am I doing? 
I don't want to have to go back to, to full-time work. I worked hard to get this far, to not have to do those things, to be able to live the life pretty much the way I wanted to. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's better than the life that I was living before I went full-time self-employed. And I've always had other income streams. I've never just relied on my business, ever, because I like to duck and dive. I like the variation that I get from doing various things. And the side hustles that I'm doing now, which is really simple things like doing surveys online and market research, um, does kind of fill a financial gap. And I found it quite interesting. And it varies but I feel like I'm doing something useful. And I just wondered what everyone else was doing. I mean, it's very hard to find really honest advice about what's really going on for people. There, is still a, there are still a lot of, you know, YouTube videos and channels that say, oh, start an Etsy business, you can make thousands every month, which is absolute rubbish. You can't. You really can't. And it's really hard to find channels where people, you know, just sit and talk like I do and tell you what it's really like. So I'm a bit of a frugal lifestyler anyway. I live quite a basic life. My expenses are very small. There are not, I can't control everything. I can't control my energy bills. I can up to a certain extent, but of course the problem isn't the energy bills, it's the standing charges that go with that that you can't change. And I reckon about two thirds of my energy bills are charges that I can't do anything about. Rent I can't do anything about. I have a cheap rent um, compared to a lot of people. I'm very lucky in that respect, but it's still a lot of money compared to my income. So I wondered, what are you doing? If you are a small business like me and you are facing similar challenges of reduced customers, the cost of everything's going up, the price of postage posting things out is crippling things. I've started selling a few things on eBay, mostly stuff that I own that I don't need, like clothes and shoes and things. And it's all very well selling an item for a price, but then you've got postage costs. So if I send out a pair of shoes or, I don't know, a coat or something like that, if I send that second class recorded, which is the cheapest secure, if you can call it secure, postage you can get, that costs £4.69, I think it is. And if you're selling a second hand item, you've got to factor that in. So let's say you want £8 for a dress. You've got to add another almost £5 to that which now means your dress is about £13. And people aren't paying that. eBay shoppers are very savvy. They won't go above their limit. And so what I've been doing is pricing things with free postage and building the postage into the price of the item. But people want things like dresses below £8. Now if I sell something for below £8 and the postage is £4, 65 or 69 then I've got the Etsy fees on the sorry the eBay fees on top of that which is probably about one pound 70 I'm only making a couple of pounds on that item and it's not worth my effort because I've had to photograph it list it then I have to package it then I have to take it down to the post office so that's another hour of my time so my time is now free as it always seems to be when you're self-employed. You know, you, you make things and you sell them, but you don't factor in your time. If you did, your prices would be much higher because if you factored in a minimum wage of whatever the minimum wage is now, 12, 13, 15 pounds, I'm not sure, we would all be priced out the market. No one would buy anything because people don't understand that when they're buying something that is handmade 
that the, there is no hourly rate that goes with that. Let's say you buy a piece of handmade, let's say it's a pair of earrings that I've made and it's reclaimed items. So it's all reclaimed beads and bits and pieces like that. Let's say I sell that for a tenner. That's the physicality of the item. Because let's say it took me two hours to make. Now if that was on minimum wage, you need to add £30. So now your item costs £40. Now, when I'm making my jewellery, most of the the items that I'm using to make that were effectively free because I get gifted broken jewellery and things like that. But there are aspects of it that are that cost money. You might have to buy um, the ear earring hooks. You've already had to invest in things like pliers. There may be other wire that you need to buy. None of that is factored in. So when you buy a pair of earrings that are handmade for a tenner or 15 or 20 pounds, you're getting a lot of what went into that for nothing. And we don't value that anymore. It's like handmade clothing. You know, one of my... I try to keep my designs very simple and there's a reason for that and it's because no one pays the hourly rate for something off the hanger. So I do bridal gowns that are very simple, they're very simplistic, they're very beautiful. Let's say I, I have a price tag of £250. Bargain for a wedding dress. You would have thought. And that does account for the time that I've spent making it because my, my design process is deliberately simplistic. So that's probably a good value for selling the item but it still doesn't allow for a massive profit margin. And you would be surprised how many people don't want to pay 250 quid for a handmade wedding dress. And yet you go into a shop, you wouldn't be able to haggle down to that price. Anyway, I'm getting off what I wanted to say, which was, I've got to stop talking about me. I'm supposed to be asking about you guys. How are you doing out there? How are you negating the problems that we face at the moment. If you are a small business, it may be that you have a partner who also has an income and therefore maybe it's not quite as bad for you. Maybe you're a stay-at-home parent and this provides you with an extra top-up income. Therefore, it may be n not be as detrimental as perhaps someone like me who lives on their own and this is their major source of income. But that doesn't make it any less concerning. And I've noticed that it is affecting my creativity. I've temporarily stopped designing because if I'm not selling as much, I'm running out of room to store things for a start because I work from home. Equally, what's the point in making lots of new stuff if no one's buying stuff anyway? I would like to shift some of the stock that I already have and make room for the new things. And the selling of things increases my creativity because suddenly it's, oh, people do want to buy my things. Because when people don't buy your things, you immediately think they hate my stuff rather than they don't have the money. Um, they're focused on other things. So there's all these things going around in your head when you are a creative person anyway. You are always doubting your abilities, um, doubting your worth. That's, that's just the mentality of being a creative person. You're always very critical of your own, your own work and your own place in the world and your own worth. And I've been doing a lot of that lately. So I've put aside my design work f temporarily and I've been focusing on things like the website and the YouTube channel and trying to hone my skills, making YouTube shorts, detailing what I make because I think it's a better way of advertising what I do than just plonking a few pictures on a website or an e-commerce platform. But, of course, building that traffic takes time, you know. It could easily be a year before I have enough traction 
that I'm being found. Can I afford to sit around the best part of another year? I might have no choice. And I have started to look for other work. Just seeing what's out there, um, because I'm very sceptical about finding anything that is going to fit in with the way I do things now and that is going to add to my life. I don't want to end up in some awful toxic work situation, which is what I spent so many years trying to get out of, which impacts the rest of my life. This is the problem. So I'm still negotiating that and trying to work things out. So what are you doing? Have you given up? Have you gone back to other work? Where to start? Where do you start? I don't know. So that's all I really wanted to say today. And I think I might start doing more of these short, I say short, this one is now 21 minutes. Boy, can I talk. I guess it's because I don't have anyone else to talk to. I'm here on my own. It's like talking into a mirror. Someone out there is watching and listening to this and thinking, hmm, that's me. If you are, please comment. I will answer. I have a policy of answering comments and responding to comments because I think the dialogue is really important. And I think YouTube users, there's some really good dialogue going on there I get into all sorts of conversations with people on YouTube so and also um, like and subscribe to the channel I know it sounds very advertising and businessy uh, it's free all you do is click a like button and a subscribe button and it'll help you get found and it means that every time I post something new you I'll appear in your feed that's all it is no one's asking you to commit money or your time. You don't have to view the videos, but they will appear in your feed and it just makes things easier to find. So that's all I'm going to say for a Monday morning. That's quite enough talking for a Monday morning. Um, I have errands to run. I do actually have, I sold three things over the last few days. So I've got to head to the post office now the weekend is over and get those sent out. Um, so that's a at least been a slightly better start to the month. <laughs> it gives me it gives me hope for July. We'll see how we get on. Um, but but th thank you for watching and thank you for listening. And um, please come back again soon. It's nice to have company. <laughs>